guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Amaris, and this is Sprucing Up Mayhem. So today we're back in the kitchen. It is gonna be episode two in the Kitchen Makeover series. When I asked for you guys' opinions, it was almost a unanimous vote for having a series of videos instead of just one long kitchen makeover. But because there were a few people that um, wanted to see just the whole makeover in one video, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna have a series of kitchen makeover episodes and then at the end when the whole video is finished, I will compile all of the footage and make an overall kitchen makeover beginning to end episode. The projects we're gonna be working on in this video are going to be um, some painting projects as well as uh, we ordered our kitchen lighting and so we're gonna switch out the kitchen lighting and I'm really excited to see what it looks like up. So let me flip you around, show you the things that we're gonna be painting and then we'll get started. These shelves are one of the things that we're gonna be painting today, but if you haven't seen the first part of this kitchen makeover, I would stop right now and go and watch part one because we go over um, paint colors and I talk about the inspiration for my kitchen makeover. So you don't wanna miss that, but if you have been following along and you want to see the rest of this kitchen makeover series, go ahead and subscribe and click the bell notification so that you get notified when new episodes of this series come out. We use this countertop every single day so it needs to get sealed before it ends up being ruined. And we're going to be cutting new shelves for the coffee bar out of this wood so that they look more substantial. I am using an orbital sander and a 60 grit sandpaper sheet for this project. If you've ever been confused about what the numbers mean for sandpaper grit, the higher the number, the smoother and finer this, the grit is going to be on the sandpaper, and the lower the number, the more coarse and rigid the sandpaper grit is going to be on the sandpaper sheet. So for this project, I'm using a 60 grit. It's, it is coarser. Um, so I'm able to really get these chips and bumps and, um, you know, get some of these things smoothed out. Um, but usually the way that it works is that you gradually, um, after using your coarser grit, do a second and third pass with gradually higher grit values. So you could do like 60 in the beginning and then you can move to 100 and then 120 to get a very, very pristine, smooth finish. Um, but for this project, I did just use 60 because I just wanted to get rid of the rigid um, bumps and the, um, the chips and things. And then it was relatively smooth enough that I didn't feel the need to do a second and third pass. But if I were like flipping a piece of furniture, then I would have.
So there are a couple reasons why we don't use this fan and why we're choosing to trade it out for a light now. And one of the reasons is because those pot lights that are above the fan, when they are on with the fan blades, the fan blades create like a strobing effect with the light and it's actually very bothersome to us. And then the second reason is because um, the dust that collects on the fan, I am a terrible duster. I don't dust my house nearly as much as I should. And even when you do dust, um, you're still knocking the dust down into your kitchen. And so I would rather just not have um, a fan in my kitchen. Our electrical box in the ceiling is actually not centered over our island so we're going to use this hook to swag the light over to where I want it to be and we were going to use the drywall anchor that it comes with but we ended up actually being able to screw it directly into a stud so that was awesome. Okay, so it's late and we just finished hanging the light over the island in the kitchen and I'm going to start painting all of the shelves and the countertop now. It is close to 9 o'clock at night, but I want to get at least one coat on all of these things so they can at least dry overnight and then I can put the final coat on tomorrow and put them back up. I wanted to show you what I was going to use to do this painting because I'm doing it inside on top of my dining room table. And I'm using these little uh, paint cones and they're relatively inexpensive, but the reason that I like these is because the first time that I painted my kitchen cabinets, I used solo cups and you can absolutely do that as an even cheaper alternative. But what I found with solo cups is that they're not actually very sturdy. So if you put a little bit of too much pressure uh, with your roller or your brush on whatever it is that you're painting or you know, you're know you putting heavy, wood like this on top of them, they will start giving after a while and um, it's actually pretty annoying. So like I said, you could use solo cups. I've used solo cups before um, to save money, but these I've used for multiple projects now. They've relatively already paid for themselves. They are very sturdy because they come to a point if your paint is a little bit tacky still when you flip it over to do your coat on the other side, there's so little of the cone that's actually touching the surface that um, you won't have like really any paint pull away when you take it off of the cone. So these little paint cones are worth buying. Um, you can get them at any hardware store, even stores like Meyer and things like that. I will do my best to like link them in the description box below. Um, I'm still trying to figure out links, so. So anyway, I'm also going to show you the paint that we're going to use. I'm actually going to be using this Scuff Defense paint by Bear. And it is in a satin finish and it's in the color um, Chantilly Lace. And the reason that I'm using this is because um, this is the color that I'm doing my walls in. The first time that I did my kitchen makeover, I made the mistake of using a flat paint. And I love the look of flat paints, not having that sheen. but. I will say that it was a mistake to do it in the kitchen because with the grease splatters and the amount of candles that I burn in my kitchen, you can't just do like quick touch-ups. The walls will change, especially if you light a lot of candles like I do. The walls will just sort of gray and you can't really tell when you're just looking at it, but when you go to touch things up, you'll definitely be able to tell. So I am going to be repainting behind all of my shelves that I'm putting back up, they're gonna be the same color as the walls and I hope that it looks really seamless and, and beautiful. So I'm gonna to get to painting this stuff. Hopefully I can get the first coat on um, tonight. Um, I might even really try to power through and do two coats, who knows, but 
We'll see what we get to. Let's get to work. One tip I'd like to share is that when you're doing a painting project, I would start with either the back of the cabinet door or the underneath of whatever project you're working on because when you flip it over, if it's a little bit tacky, you're not going to be ruining the front or the most visible part of your project. You'll be um, messing up the back. <laughs> so those that can be touched up, but you always want your most perfect and seamless finish on the front of your project. Okay, so the first coat of paint is done on the countertop and the shelves, and I'm not gonna be filming the second coat to spare you having to watch a white shelf being painted white. But while the first coat is drying, I don't wanna waste any time because I have just enough energy that I think I can get a second coat onto these shelves. I am going to go into the kitchen and I'm going to start clearing dishes off of the shelves that are on either side of my kitchen window and start prepping those shelves so that I can get a coat of paint on those. I'm, I might not get them painted tonight, um, but at least part of the work will be done so that I can um, wake up and hit the ground running tomorrow. So let's get to it while this coat of paint is drying. I am so grateful for my husband. He helped me so much this week. He had a busy schedule, but he took five, 10, 15 minutes here and there to help me get some of these projects done. Good morning guys it's a new day and i am back in my paint clothes i dropped my daughter off at school this morning and now i'm home and ready to get back to work on painting these shelves Just like when I do dishes, I think when I paint. And one of the things that I was thinking about on this day was gratitude, or rather being ungrateful. And not the act of being ungrateful, but more the sneaking building of ungratefulness that happens, even in situations where we used to be thankful for something. And I guess I'm specifically talking about my experience with my house. We moved in and I was so happy and excited and thankful that God had provided all of these things, these desires that he knew that I had for my first home, and he provided them in this house. And then slowly over time, as I started to notice little things and perfections and, and things started to get in the way of me being able to work on my house the way that I wanted to, um, money wasn't um, as bountiful as we would have wanted it to be. Um, you know, that ungratefulness started to seep in. 
And I'm just so thankful for how far I've come because the Lord has really taught me over these last few years that um, being grateful is a choice and you should you you choose to be grateful and one of the ways that you can um, train your yourself train your mind and your heart to be more grateful is by just picking out all of the little things it's going to feel monotonous at times um, in the beginning to you know thank you lord for waking me up thank you lord for you know feeding me thank you lord that my sweater that i wanted to wear today is clean thank you lord that I have a roof over my head. Thank you that it's raining outside and the rain is not falling on me. It's falling on my roof. And one thing that the Lord has really been showing me is that blessings are birthed from gratitude. When you are constantly dwelling on all of the things that are not right and all of the things that um, you aren't grateful for, that you're not happy about, those things will just breed in your life. And the more gratitude that you show, the more... um, things that you say you're thankful for, the more things that, you know, you focus your mind on that maybe this is not okay, but I thank you for this and this and this, Lord. Blessings are birthed from gratefulness. And I'm so thankful that he has been so intentional in showing me that these last few years. I'm so thankful that instead of being upset and discontent and unhappy with the home that God gave me. (laughs) So purposefully, he gave us this house. I have been able, he's allowed me to turn my thoughts around and turn my heart around as far as how I feel about my house. And so I just wanted to share that with you, that if you're feeling discontent and you're feeling unhappy and ungrateful, you can turn it around. You can train your thoughts and your mind to think in a different way and to, um, choose to be grateful. Okay, so it's later in the day and I know that I'm wearing a different outfit, but I had to go and pick my daughter up from school and I didn't want to wear um, gross paint clothes. So I just wanted to show you before Um, we get this countertop back onto the cabinets because it's all dry and ready to go back on, is that behind the cabinet there is a plug. And I use this plug so that I can plug in crock pots and our coffee machines. So in order to save space, we got this plug that lays flat on the outlet. And we're hoping that this will help us get the cabinets closer to the wall without actually moving the outlet at this time. We're not electricians and electricians are expensive. And so we will eventually move the plug up so that it's not behind the cabinets. But for now, I feel like this might be a good solution. So we're gonna see how this works. This wasn't even supposed to be part of this video. (laughs) I wasn't planning to do anything with um, the green paint this video. Um, But now that I see this countertop on the cabinets, I really want to see the green up next to it because I basically whitewashed this wall. I turned everything that was wood white. And so I really want to see that pop of green next to this to kind of get an idea and start to put my vision together. Um, Don't worry about this gap right here. Um, This board is just slightly warped, but there are special screws that you can get to um, tighten countertop down onto your cabinets. Um, And we will do that um, eventually, but these cabinets aren't even attached to the wall yet. So we will deal with that later, but when the coffee uh, machine and everything is on here, it does weigh it down. So 
The other thing that I wanted to show you is that um, this is one of my favorite brushes to use. It is called a Purdy, um, a Purdy Wooster brush, Purdy. And it's a very good brand. Um, they're more expensive, but they give you a, a really smooth finish. And when you're cutting, like doing straight lines and doing the outside of walls and things, these are really good brushes to use, especially ones that have an angle, that are cut on an angle, um, like this one is. But it's really important to wash them right after you use them so that they stay nice, because like I said, they are more expensive. And even the cheaper ones I'm starting to wash now because everything is getting expensive. And I don't wanna have to go buy new brushes every time that I have a project because I have lots of projects. So let me stop talking and finally get this paint on here so we can see what it looks like. I had no idea at the time that all of this paint soaked through that sheet onto my beautiful table, but these wipes are absolutely amazing. They smell like essential oils, so not harsh at all, and they remove paint like nobody's business. Um, some areas are super easy to get off, some you have to put a little bit of elbow grease into, um, and I find that it's easier to just like wipe over them a few times, move on to a new spot, and then by the time that you go back to the old spot, um, it's softened up and easier to get off. But I took, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to get all this paint off of this table, and I it even took it off my leather. Um, <laughs> I was very, very thankful that I had these wipes on hand. Okay, so I did dishes specially for you so that you didn't have to stir them while we're working on these shelves over here. Um, the plan is that I was going to paint my archway first, but I decided that I would switch gears and I would redecorate my shelves. They've been curing for about 36 hours now. 
Um, so I think it's relatively safe to put things on them. They're not fully cured, but at the end of the day, I need my house back and I think that they're just about dry enough to put stuff back on them. So um, I'm gonna do that and then I will change back into my grimy pink clothes because I really don't want to decorate the shelf in grimy pink clothes or um, you know have to put them back on and then not be able to get into the shower after that. So that is the plan. I'm going to redecorate these here shelves. Um, and then also the shelves over my coffee bar and kind of get everything back into place. I'm really excited about that. Um, the reason I put all of my decor and dishes in the dining room is because I really want to challenge myself. Some things will go back into the spot that they were in because I just specifically like them there or because it's functional for the way that I, you know, we as a family run the kitchen and grab things. I don't want to move everything. But some decor pieces, I really want to kind of try to move them around and not put everything right back in the exact same spot that it was in and kind of, you know, get a fresher, more rejuvenated new kitchen feel. So, all right, let's do this. completely redecorating this left side of these shelves um, but I wanted to leave this footage in because I just want to continue to encourage you and to help you to understand that when you are decorating and especially decorating shelves it is not an exact science and a lot of times you may put things on the shelf step back and take a look at them and realize that you just don't like them or it's not functional or you know, you find something else that you think would look even nicer on the shelf and so you move things around. So. Don't think that if you have to move things around multiple times even that you're doing it wrong. I encourage you to play with your decor and continue moving things around until it feels right to you. Believe it but my camera ended up dying before we were actually able to officially get this light up so I ended up having to take my after shots um, the next day
hope that you guys like this video. Next week is going to be a clean with me. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you haven't seen the episode one of my kitchen makeover series, go ahead and go watch that now. Um, I am so thankful that you're here. I'm so thankful for your support. I pray that you have a blessed week. Till next time. Bye. Thank you.